It's nice to see you new people today. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Uh, my name is Adia, I'm from Platinum, and here's also my colleague Ivan. We're gonna be hosting this call. And today we're gonna have um, project pitch of two projects. Uh, we have Valeri here, who is uh, CEO and co-founder of, um, sorry, not co-founder, uh, CPO of Swisstronic. Hi. Hi. And we also have Ben from Lumishare. Ben. Hey guys. Let's start with Valery. So my name is Valery. I'm a CPO and co-founder of Swisstronic. Uh, what we're actually doing in Swisstronic, uh, we solve two issues that we see in the blockchain right now. The first one is that we have a lot of regulations coming to the uh, blockchain and to the crypto itself. However, all the solutions are more or less centralized. If you want to become compliant, you need to sign a contract with a company that will perform KYC checks or with a company who do anti-money laundering checks and uh, we're solving it, providing this data on chain. The other part is actually a restriction of uh, privacy preserving blockchains and several cases against them. In our personal opinion, it's quite important to keep personal data safe and data about the transactions safe, but we should keep uh, fraudulent activities out of this type of chains. And uh, we're solving this too because all the people who are joining Swisstronic and who are trying to use privacy preserving services need to perform KYC and anti-money laundering checks. Uh, ecosystem can be divided in four main layers. The first one is the blockchain, which is built uh, using Cosmos SDK and the Ethereum virtual machine integrated. Also, this is the special portal for issuers, companies that can verify your data or generate proofs about your data, let's say that this, this is your own assets or this specific assets are backed up by something that can be applied for RWAs. And uh, the next level is utilities. Uh, the first one is Swisstronic Digital Identity, uh, which I'll describe further, but in a few words, this is a digital passport, which contains all the information with verifications that you have created before. Second one is ZK Tokens, which is a service where you can exchange any of your existing tokens, let's say Bitcoin or Ethereum or USDT or anything else on the specific tokens on our chain that will make them private and untraceable, but that, as I told before, can be accessed only by people who were verified and are eligible to do that and only for the funds that are checked by anti-money laundering procedures and are marked as clear and clear. Uh, the third thing is centralized messenger, which is basically a messenger with nodes that are uh, built in the nodes of the network. But uh, there are way the, the connection between two people is made directly. Again, this can be used only by people who are eligible to do that. In some countries, that would be restricted. And uh, the last level is the ecosystem, which is basically the front ends and the applications that we will distribute among our users. Uh, so storing digital identity is uh, an aggregation module that uh, gets data from issuers who are uh, using our chain. Also external issuers that can be centralized entities like Samsub or Onfido or anyone else. And also external DIDs like Polygon ID, let's say. Uh, when you are creating credentials or connecting external credentials, you can later on use them on different chains, not only Swisstronic, and uh, reuse them each time, which will reduce the friction of uh, entering into the new service that requires KYC that can be applied for fiat on of ramp, let's say, or the centralized exchanges or centralized exchanges. And also it reduces the price for these services to maintain users verification and compliance checks. Uh, business model is quite easy. On the blockchain chain level, this is fees from transactions and usage of our services. And also on a centralized level, we assist uh, other companies to actually adopt to the regulations and to have our services built in, which will make them legal in their uh, in their countries. Uh, some words about our traction. Uh, we have raised uh, 5 million US dollars in uh, 2022 and uh, 1.5 uh, million US dollars during this year. Uh, we're in the private round right now. Uh, we launched our testnet in uh, July 2023. We attracted more than 1,000 developers and had uh, roughly 200 transactions there uh, in a week. Uh, also, our community is something like 10,000 people, and we had 74 publications in recognized media. Uh, target addressable market we see right now is about 1 billion uh, US dollars in Europe, but it's grow growing rapidly because of the upcoming regulations and adoption of CBDCs. Uh, our go-to-market strategy is to actually start with attracting other companies that can provide uh, compliance data on-chain 
and uh, later on work on the actual clients like uh, centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Just to reveal uh, some data upfront, uh, we already have uh, partners who would be performing KYC and anti-money laundering checks. And at this moment, we're planning to integrate with couple lending protocols to be part of their environment. Also uh, quite important is to attract developers, which we're working on right now. And as I told before, we already attracted more than 1,000 into the project. Uh, our plan is to launch our main net uh, this summer, uh, approximately on 30th of June, and uh, everyone is very welcome to join us. Uh, our company is based in Switzerland, Zuk. Uh, we have about 27 uh, team members. Our CEO is Konstantin Kugi. Uh, he has PhD in economics and he was working in commodities trading for more than 15 years. Also have a vast experience in investing in crypto and traditional banking. Uh, our team is mostly tech. Me, Anton and Dennis were working uh, in uh, Middle East on several communication products. The biggest of them, Tawasso, was uh, evaluated by KPMG for 260 million US dollars in 2022. Uh, Mike Antonio, who is our blockchain lead, was working on CBDC initiative for Euro Commission. And Alexandra was working on uh, marketing in crypto for more than seven years. Uh, at this moment, uh, during the private round, we are collecting 27 million point nine. Uh, US dollars and uh, we have two options uh, one is for VCs or institutional investors starting from 100,000 uh, 100, uh, US dollars to 1 million or individual investor but he should be accredited so he should come from the specific countries that are not restricted for us mostly this is European Union and uh, their ticket size is uh, 10,000 US dollars and maximum is 100,000. That's all. Thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, Valeri, can you please uh, share maybe your plans for this year? What you're planning to do? Yeah. Uh, actually, we launched the better version of um, our compliance service, uh, Swissonic Digital Identity, at the end of 2023. And this moment, we're making it work, integrating KYC uh, providers who would actually perform identity checks anti-money laundering providers who would perform fund checks and uh, integrating other DIDs. The first of uh, them would be Polygon ID and uh, two more would be following before the mainnet launch. And after the mainnet, we'll actually work on the centralization of the providers of the compliance data, integrating more partners and launching ZK tokens, the anonymization mechanism. Uh, that's our main goals for the year. And we have a question from Quentin uh, in the chat. How do you engage new developers before going into the mainnet step? Uh, actually, we are using uh, several platforms to attract them for bug bounty programs. <laughs> also, we have uh, our own uh, bug bounty program uh, web page uh, where we are bringing traffic from various sources using influencers or our partners or our friends who can actually participate uh, in the program. And of course, we're incentivizing them that's, that's the most obvious part. Uh, also, some of the developers who participated in Bug Bounty were validators who are right now running on our network. And yeah, by the way, if some of you are validators, be happy. Uh, we're happy if, if you'll join us. We're going to run a validator program with incentives in a month. Okay. Um... Ivan, do you have any questions? No, that was pretty pretty clear for me. I think that was good stuff. People actually wrote that in the comments. So, oh, I see another one um, uh, popping up. So, uh, Valentin uh, is asking, how do you plan to bring more liquidity to the blockchain? Actually, that's a good question. But uh, I, I, I would say that uh, biggest impact here is the amount of partnership that we'll have, uh, because partners will basically use our services to verify data in their own projects and that will bring liquidity if, if, if that's the if that answer suits you of course uh, but if we're talking about several things but i didn't mention it on the presentation um, you can pay fees to the issuers on the platform not only in our tokens but also in other tokens let's say in usdt or ethereum and so on and so on and so on but inside the blockchain itself the transactions will go on swisstronics and uh, here we need liquidity uh, which would be provided in gas stations but yeah i, I suppose it, that wasn't part of the question but that, that that's a more complicated part uh, how we'll solve that we're still thinking about it okay so uh, i also don't have any questions uh now we can start with ben uh ben please feel free to pitch your project hello guys good evening thanks for having me so i will introduce you to lumi share 
our project. So Lumisher is a financial blockchain ecosystem around the tokenization of real world assets and specifically the renewable energy. The renewable, renewable energy assets um, we created our asset-backed NFT marketplace to tokenize and fractionalize uh, renewable energy assets after they will get verified by our due diligence team. Um, in target to mitigate the risk, we added an additional layer to verify each of the projects before they will have the ability to get into our platform. Um, beyond that, right now we already signed with three solar farms from Europe and from the UAE. So uh, the next step right now is to launch the testnet of Lumi Place. It's going to take place within the next few weeks. Um, we already published, announced it on publicly and Right now, we we launched the platform Lumistake. The Lumistake platform is a DeFi platform to create staking pools from one end and from the other end to stake their tokens. And same thing here with this platform, we mitigated the risk dramatically. By that, we added an additional layer um, of adding the rewards automatically after creating the staking pool unlike other platforms that exist right now. This is our website, as you can see, and I will add about more information about the Lumi token. <clears throat> our token is listed on MEXC and the LA token right now, and soon will be listed on larger exchanges, and as well as it will be probably the same time when we are going to launch, to official launch the platform, the Lumi Place. Um, so I will get into the Lumi Place. I will show you the demo version of the marketplace of how it will work exactly. So we <clears throat> combined features and functions from the social media networks as we know it, along with the traditional marketplaces. So the creators, which is the solar farm owners and the wind farm owners, will have the ability to, uh, to create stories, to create articles and videos, and then to promote their projects. Uh, regarding the financial model into the platform, we Use, we are using the mezzanine structure uh, between the debt and the equity. Uh, so it's uh, alternate, uh, a very uh, interesting alternative for the traditional opportunities for uh, solar farms and wind farms right now to raise funds. Right now, uh, the solar farms and wind farms, if they want to raise funds, they have only two options. First is the bank, which they can take a debt for, uh, let's say, 20, 25 years and uh, the equity partners, which both of them have uh, very tough requirements. So we're creating a new channel for them in target to raise funds. But in our vision, we are not going to stop only with the renewable energy. It's just part of our approach in the company to be laser focused. And that's why we are focusing only on the renewable energy until we will achieve our KPIs. And then we will go through another uh, real world assets categories that will be added one by one as i mentioned after we will achieve all of uh, the defined kpis very important feature that you can see right now on the demo is the risk management online we integrated with a third party technological solution to capture the data online from the solar farms that will be connected uh, connected directly to their computers and then we can cap capture the data online, including the electricity produced, including the feed-in tariff, including uh, everything from A to Z, including generate reports. Because we are, we will work only with projects that have at least uh, two years of revenue, so we can measure more about their ability. Uh, so that's how it will work in general. I want to give you some information about our team. So I am the CEO and co-founder, as you uh, just mentioned, but I want to present the other team members. We have offered our co-founder and CFO more than 30 years of experience uh, as an entrepreneur and the CPA. Uh, we have David, our vice president. Uh, David is a former uh, senior at BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock US, uh, he used to be the managing director of Lehman Brothers before the recession, a few years before, and the vice president of Credit Suisse as well. Beyond that, you can find in our team uh, 
experts from uh, the leading uh, uh, companies in the blockchain, the global banking and the fintech areas and the renewable energy as well. We have Neta, our head of renewable energy, which is by himself a partner in solar farms worth more than $600 million. And Les Mail, which was the CEO of the gold and commodities exchange in Dubai. Um, that's about them, a little bit about our partners and the partnerships as well. So we are official partners with designers Sheikh Muhammad bin Ahmad El Nayan, uh, which is a member of the royal family of Abu Dhabi. Uh, he joined us as an investor and partner in the company. Uh, our company, by the way, established in Abu Dhabi. And we have another company that are under establishment right now in uh, Europe. Uh, we started the procedure to regulate, to, uh, to comply to the regulation of Mika. About our partnerships, we have a partnership with BNB Chain, uh, and now we are starting with them. And the Greenfield, if you heard about it, it's a program of BNB Chain. So we are joining it. You can find here uh, Launcher, uh, Launcher, the company that tokenizing real estate and another companies as you can find in our website and the white paper. A um, little bit about our tokenomics. Uh, we created a sophisticated tokenomics for the, for the next 35 years, at least 35 years in, that uh, combined between the functions of the burning and the lockups. Um, we allocated 50% of the tokens uh, to be burned uh, in the next uh, 35 years, 30 years to be uh, uh, specific. Um, as you can find in our website and our social media, we are starting to the calendar burn starting from uh, the 5th, uh, February 5th, and it will take place on every 5th to every month. So you can find more about our tokenomics and all the information in our website and uh, our white paper. And that's it. I just want to add a small note. I joined you today. Uh, with the huge edict uh, because I didn't find any replacement. So sorry for any uh, misunderstanding for my side, sorry. All right, Ben. No, no worries. Thank you so much for still joining today. It means a lot. Does anyone have questions for Ben? Yeah, I have. Uh, Jakub Tukeski is here. Uh, I'm from Terraland. Hi. So yeah, hi, 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 hi to all. I'm sorry, I'm not, I, you cannot see me because of my, let's say, problems with internet. So maybe, maybe later, maybe on the next meeting. Uh, uh, one question, Ben, because uh, uh, you showed us something that there is, uh, that was mentioned about uh, the people who can buy, let's say, the part of the, of the, of the PV and uh, they, they, they have, if they have instead of these tokens, or I mean security tokens, or uh, how the share looks like really of this, uh, the share in this, in these PVs. Yes, for sure. So I will explain you the the process from A to Z. It's very simple, so it will uh, explain it to you better. So let's uh, assume that we have a solar farm from Dubai. The, the cost of this solar farm is $10 million. Uh, after they get verified, they can generate an NFT collection, let's say 10,000 pieces, okay? So each of the pieces represent $1,000. So that's how the procedure will work. After, of course, they get verified and they sign the agreement that will uh, um, provide the, the assurance to the investor that they will receive the the monthly payment, the monthly uh, yield. I hope that it answered to your question. I, I think um, if it's not the problem, it's a, any possibility to share our contact somehow because it's uh, rather important for me. And, and what's really more, I, I, I'm just, uh, uh, I, I'd like, if you have time, of course, if it's possible to meet somehow, maybe out of this out of this meeting and ju just talk about this. If it's possible, of course, sorry. Yes, because, why not? Uh, I'm sending yeah. here, I'm sending here, I'm sharing here on the chat my personal email address. So uh, each of you that want to reach and to ask more questions, and to learn more about uh, learn more about us so feel free to reach i just sent it on the chat okay i have it so thank you very much okay and we have a question uh from the chat from ali uh how do you make these reward assets tradable and ensure liquidity or you just offer yield so we are working on uh, both channels <clears throat> first for the investor side uh, which we are opening this market uh, not only for the individual investors but of course for the institutional investors so we already started to uh, contact 
a few hedge funds and few uh, insurance companies around the globe and to explain them the the advantages of our platform uh, versus the current uh, the current situation and that's how it works in general is there any other questions um yeah hi ben this is uh joseph from turgo uh, i'm sorry guys i'm just showing you first time ben i just want to quickly ask you about your model so you're saying you guys only are that you're you're doing fit projects but um, they have to have two years of revenue Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Why would, I'm just asking because, you know, my background is in this development. Why would a developer, let's say a holder of a FIP contract, need um, investment? You know, the FIP contract's paying them already, right? They have a contract for, you know, 15, 20 years, whatever it is, the PPA is or the DPPA, right? So if they already have two years of revenue, why, why are they raising money again? So you can consider it as an alternative for them. Question is just, you know, like if a contract holder of a FIP contract, you know, of a PPA, or DPPA or whatever it is, right? They have, you know, these contracts are 15, 20 years and the solar farm is already developed or the renewable projects mm-hmm. developed, right? Because you're saying you need two years of revenue, right? So the mm-hmm. hardest part for these projects to develop is to develop them. You know, once the, once they're connected to their grid and they're getting paid, why would they need to raise money again? You can consider it as a refinance. And they are going to refinance the project and then they will have uh, more funds to develop new projects. And as we asked a few uh, projects that we already discussed with, it makes sense for them because right now the money is very expensive. So it makes uh, sense for them. And even if we are talking about another day that the money is not so expensive like right now with the interest and everything. So it makes sense for them to refinance their projects from the open market and not only f- not uh, from the debt side, uh, as you mentioned, or from the equity side, which the uh, requirements are very quite tough. So we are a a competitive solution. You can consider it like that for refinance. Okay, Ben, you know, I'll give you my email if you want to maybe contact. Like um, like I said, we we develop solar farms all over the world. Some of the biggest ones, right? You know, from 700 megawatts to over a gig. We work in Europe and stuff. I maybe I'd I'd like to talk to you maybe further about it. Um, You know, maybe not this, not the place. But yeah, I'll send my email in the chat. Maybe Mm -hmm. you could give me a, you know, send me an email and then we can maybe discuss a little bit further the model. For sure. Yes, I would be happy to. All right, guys. So any more questions in the chat? Well, because I have mine. So Ben, what are the biggest challenges that you are facing right now in the project? Uh, How is it going right now? Actually, it's going well, very well. Uh, if we are if we are talking about the development of the platform, so as I mentioned, we finished the development of the alpha version, and we are uh, going to uh, ra- to launch the alpha testing, the testnet, within the next few weeks. Um, and if we are talking about it from the token perspective, so the token is doing uh, really nice right now on the MEXC and LA token. Uh, with more than uh, 300% up during the last uh, four weeks. Um, So we are getting ready. Of course, the main thing is our uh, king, (laughs) the LumiPlay, the platform to uh, ROWA tokenization. So I think we are doing well. The challenges that we are facing right now is to preserve and to uh, to bridge the gap between the Web 2 to Web 3, which is one of our missions as well. Uh, so I think that's the main uh, challenges that we are facing currently. Okay, I hear you. All right, any more questions? Uh, yes, can I, can I ask? Uh, yeah, Hi, sure. yes. Um, I'm Michael, I'm from Cyprus. I worked a little bit in private equity on uh, oil and gas and a little bit renewables. I'm, I just, um, I'm very curious about, uh, you spoke uh, uh, about insurance. I'm just wondering whether the legal, the, the contractual terms with the token. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I mentioned, uh, thank you for the question. So I mentioned the insurance companies, the uh, um, institutional investors that we met with in Target to hear their voice, to hear what they are thinking about our model and about our solution. Uh, we are still didn't sign any contract with them yet. Uh, but uh, it will be directly from our platform and we have our own, uh, we will have our own department only for the institutional investors. Uh, but as I mentioned before, we, we're still in the middle of the process of the regulation in, the, in, U- in Europe uh, under the MICA regulation. So it's still, you know, we are talking with them, but still nothing signed officially. Okay, thank you. Okay, so 
as we are not receiving any more questions, I think it's time to wrap it up. Okay, thank you everyone for participating and joining us today. And thank you, Ben, again, for sharing the presentation. Uh, that was amazing. So again, thanks for joining and have a good day.